Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Okay, so this is going to be the first of many videos um, trying to teach the Python programming language. Okay, so let's just uh, jump straight straight into it. All right, so let's talk about what we what we are going to need to write our Python code. So really, all you need is a, is, is a text editor, right? That's it. You can just use Notepad on Windows or something like Text Edit on on Mac to write your Python code, and you can write pretty much any program. But the thing is, when you use um, um, a, a software like a, a Notepad or or any text editor, it's tedious. Right, so there are these things or these softwares, these programs called IDEs, Integrated Development Environment, right, which is basically a fancy term or description for a software, right, which has a text editor in there and allows us to write um, code. It, it gives us extra functionality to write code, you know, faster, and um, it gives us tools to be able to um, try to optimize our code and, and stuff like that. So, be, in, in in other words, IDEs are are uh, advanced um, no, no, uh, advanced text editors with extra functionality. So we are going to be using IDEs to write our Python code. And there are so many of them um, out there. But then I'm going to choose one and uh, to work with. You can look for, um, you can go through the various Python um, IDEs out there and choose the one uh, that you like. So basically, um, these uh, basically uh, these software these software uh, this software this IDE takes takes our Python code and then interprets it to the machine that you are writing writing your Python code on. So for example, I'm using a Mac. If I download an IDE, that software that I just talked about, it's going to take my Python code and it's going to interpret it to this machine so that this machine understands my Python code and can run my program and do what I uh, I told it to do. Okay, so before we download the software itself, we, uh, we need to download Python itself. We need to download Python itself so that we can access it uh, with our IDE. Although, otherwise, we can't access Python. We can't write our programs without Python itself. So we need to download Python. So let's navigate to, you can just type in Python in Google, right? It's going to uh, come up with python.org. That's really the web website we want to go to. So you go to python.org. And when you go to the website, this is the home page, you go to downloads, and you see over here, it's it's able to it, it's been able to detect that I, I'm using a Mac. So um, it's giving me the download files I need to download. On Windows, I'm sure it's going to do the same. So you see a couple of versions. You see Python 3.6.1, and you see, okay, well, I don't know wh um, when, you're, when you're watching this video, but then you see the latest version, and you see, um, um, an old version. What you want is the latest version, right? So I'm going to download Python, um, Python 3.6.1 and save it on my computer, right? Before uh, we go and download the IDE, let's just install Python 3.6.1. So double click it or, you know, click it and let's just follow the instructions on Mac. Just just go, go ahead and follow it. Agree <laughs> and, and install. I'm going to go ahead and type in my password. I actually have it already installed, but I'm just doing this so that you guys um, can do it or can see how it works. Because once you are once you install it and you install it, and you are installing the IDE, there are some problems you can face. So I want to do this so you can see it. Okay, less than a minute. Shouldn't take too long. is a bit slow okay so we're done so once you're done installing Python oh, I'm going to move the, the installer to, to, uh, to the trash so once you're done installing Python that's the first step now let's go ahead and install the IDE that I was, that I was talking about so now there are several of them so choose the one that you you um, you like um, upon using it or upon trying them all out but I like Python. Uh, I like Wing Wing 101. The IDE is called Wing 101. That's because that's the IDE I use when I was learning Python. So I'm, I'm used to it. But but I I use other ones too sometimes. So go ahead and type in Wing 101. This is just a search, and it's going to take you to this website, WingWare.com. WingWare.com. Um, let's just go there. Well, 
I'm going to click on this logo to go to the to the home page. So this is the home page uh, of um, wingware.com. Um, once you go, once you get there, just click on download, and you see the various versions. Wing 101 is a free version, so you don't have to worry about paying anything. So click on Wing 101, and then again, it's able to detect that I'm using a Mac, so it has my uh, installer here. But on Windows, it, it will, if you're using Windows, it will detect that you're using Windows, so you can download the Windows version too. So I'm going to download the Mac version and allow it to um, finish um, downloading. So I basically had I had this IDE. That's what that's what I use for the programming challenges in Python. But I had I uninstalled it just to show you guys um, how how it works. Um, at least with ins installation. So I'm going to click on this and install that too. Okay, so I'm just going to drag this to the applications folder. And it's just like installing it, basically. So on Windows, I'm sure you, you're going to um, f um, face um, just the regular installation process. Click Next, Next, and, uh, and install it. For, you know, for most um, installations, it's very, um, it's similar, it's common, and uh, it, you know, it's similar. Um, across many applications. Okay, so I have it installed now. And when, once I go to my applications, I see it here. All right, so I'm going to launch it. And w when you launch it for the first time on Mac, now on Windows you you may not face this, face this, but when you launch this on the first time on Mac, you may be prompted with a message like this. In, in, in which case, you have to click open, right? Because it's you know. In in your settings, you've told you Mac um, comes with a with a setting, a default setting of um, with a, def a default setting to uh, basically which allows you to download applications from only um, re recognized um, you know developers, right, or, or authors. But you can change that setting so that you can download software from pre pretty much anywhere. But, um, but based on my setting, that's why it's asking me this, right? It's asking me this based on my setting. So you can just go ahead and click open. Wingware is um, is a trusted uh, company. So you can click on open to open it. If you're facing a problem of um, you can't open it at all, that's probably because you have your settings um, um, set differently. So let's just do that for, for a second. That's <laughs> All right, so... In that case, um, w when you have that, you go to security and privacy. Hold on a second. And then let's go to general. And so over here, you see allow apps downloaded from. Mine is currently set to App Store and Identified de Developers. And if you have it set on App Store only, it's only going to, this Mac is, your, your Mac is only going to allow um, apps that are on the App Store to be installed on your computer. So it won't allow you to even open it at all. In that case, if that's the case, before you double click or before you, you launch the application, so let's just go to my applications folder for a second here. Before you launch the application, so over here, before you launch the application, in that case, just hit, I believe it's control. Yes, control, um, hold control, and then click, single click the application, and then hit open. And in that case, it will ask you, my mind is already open. Let's just close it and see what happens. So hold control, click the application, hit open. And it's going to, you know, because, I, because I've already kind of made this computer aware that this, this software is okay, it's not asking me that, that, you know, it's not giving me that prompt again. But in your case, once you, once you hit control, okay, once you hit control in the, in the applications folder and this pops up, just hit, uh, hit open, and it's going to you're going to have the option to be able to open it um, yourself, right? All right. So um, I hope I'm sure most of you are, are, are actually know this already. If you don't, just try that. Hold control, hold control, and then single click this. Hit open, and then you be faced with a prompt where where you'd have an option to you to hit open and open application. All right. If you have any questions, just comment down below, and I'll um I'll work with you to to try to get it um, fixed. 
Okay, so basically this is Wing um, 101. Now, when you install Wing 101 for the first time, you may not see 3.6.1. That's because this is because I have done it before. Like I have configured Python to work with the 3.6.1 Py. Um, I've conf configured Wing 101 to work with the Python 3.6.1 that we downloaded. So you may see something like two points in an old version. And so we need to change that, right? So the way you do that is to um, configure Python to work with the download file, the Python file we downloaded, this one. Um, oh, I moved it to trash. I moved it to trash. So yeah, I moved it to trash. But we want to basically configure Wing 101 to work with the Python file that we, we downloaded over here. This um, this file over here, okay. And so the way you do that is you go to edit and you go to configure Python. Now, the the version of Python we installed was Python three point six point one, right? So over here in your Python executable, choose custom, and then type in, you know, j just as this is Python three point six. It doesn't really care about the you know the the, the the last number here, right? All it all it wants to know is what version is it? Is it is it three point six? Is it three point seven? Three point five? It doesn't really want to know like you know uh, you know a deeper version of it. Uh, um, in terms of in terms of the number here, it just wants to know what version is it? That's the first two numbers, right? So you type in oops, you type in Python no space and then a version. I know this is three point six point one. I know the one we downloaded downloaded was three point six point one. But just download, the, just type in the first two numbers, 3.6. So Python 3.6, no space, and then you apply, and then you hit OK. When you do that, you wouldn't see it change automatically. That's because we have to go ahead and restart um, Wing 101. So we close it, then we launch it again. And, w and when you launch it again, you're going to see that it has changed to 3.6.1. It's going to automatically detect Python on your system, um, and then and and state it here in the, in the Python shell, not debug.io Python shell. Okay, so once we have that configured, we are we are almost we are, we, are, we are basically done, right? The last thing I want us to do with a uh, with this ID is to is to change some preferences. So I'm going to first of all change the font, right? Well. You know, the only thing you see, the only the only text you see here is this, right? But it's going to you know, cut across the whole IDE once we change the font. If you click on this file here, you open a new, you, you open a new, um, basically a new t text editor, pr pr pretty much. You can just type in random stuff, right? Just to just just so that you can see that you can see the sentence once we are, or, or once we change the font, you can see how large it is or how small it is. So let's go to Wing 101, go to Preferences. And to change the font, under User Interface, right, under User Interface, just click the arrow here to um, open this up. Go to Font, and we want to use a, a custom font, right? So we want to change it to Use Selected Font Size. Um, I like Monaco, so I, I always use Monaco for my code. Change it. I'm going to, well, I'm going to um, keep keep Monaco, Monaco selected over here, keep it at regular, and then change it to about 14 or so. Um, let's see, 14. I think 14 is good. Hit OK. Apply. We can apply without hitting OK. Apply to see the changes. So 14 is not too bad. Um, how about 15? So you don't see the option here, but you can just type it here. 15. Hit OK, apply. I think 15 is um, I think it's a, it's a bit big, but uh, we can work with it. If it's too big, we'll, we can, we can change it later on. Um, it's not too bad. All right, and then we can move on to the next thing we want to change. Now over here, you can see that you have a, a line here. It's um, by default, I think it's red. Now this line, okay, when we're writing our Python code, this line is a, is like a guideline. To allow us not to exceed it, not to not to type in 
more than 80 characters on a line. Now, it's a, it's a uh, Python standard to not type 80 characters, um, to, to not type more than 80 characters on a line. Right? So we want to follow the, the, the good standards, right? So although if you, if you go over 80 characters, nothing happens. But this is a guide just to let you know that um, we shouldn't exceed 80 characters on a line. It's a good, st it's a good standard. So when we're writing our code, once we get here, we just break it, break it, and move on. So this is just a guide for us, right? I don't like the color red, so I, I, I always change mine. Bear, bear in mind, uh, this is not Python code. This is just random code just for testing purposes, just to see the font size once we change it. And just to show that, um, show that we don't have to exceed 80 characters on a line, right? We'll get to the Python stuff very soon. So I changed this line color to, to gray so that it's not too, you know, it, this, this, looks, this looks like a malfunction on my screen <laughs> once I see it. So I like to change it. So go to wing 101, back to preferences. Um, and over the, um, you find that over here in line wrapping under, under the editor section, line wrapping. And the color is here under color, edge markers, um, or basically over here, line wrapping color I changed mine to gray which is here gray 93 and I hit apply and it's still there hit okay it's still there but we can see that you know we can see that it's it's not too you know visible I close the the preferences but there's one more thing I wanted to cross check I can see I have line numbers over here line numbers just basically help number your lines so that when I'm talking to you and when I'm talking to someone or when I want to you know communicate it to to someone I can Say, oh, look at look at line three or look at line two. Um, it may not come um, turned on by default, but the way you, you turn turn it on is by going to, I believe, external display. No, interface. So user interface. Hmm. Layout. I think I missed where it is, but I'll find it soon. I'm sorry. So it's by going to editor, right? And then you can check show line numbers here. If you uncheck it and apply, you see it goes away. Show line numbers, apply, and it, and it comes back. Okay, so the, these are the few preferences we we'll need for now. Um, later on, if you want to change some more, you can go, go ahead and play around with it. We're going to basically write our Python code here. And this is just a guideline for us, as we said. And so you would see. Um, two sections over here, the Python shell and then the back.io. Now, Python shell is basically a, a feature in this IDE, this integrated development environment, this software, that allows us to type in one code or one line of code at a time. I mean, we can type in more, but it, it basically allows us to type in code at, code at a time, hit enter, it will, it will try to run that code, and then wait for us to type another line of code. Um, we can type in multiple lines of code too, but um, that's the, the purpose of Python shell is for us to, is for testing, you know, just to test our code even before we, we test, you know, test simple lines of code even before we we, we run it in the, in the in the large scale. So you can run, you can for example do something like one plus one. Right, this is just math. This is not really Python, although we can do that in Python. Um, hit enter, and it you know it, it tells you to. And so once you see this line, it's waiting for you. Once you see this, the, these um, angle brackets, three angle brackets, it's basically waiting for you to type in another line. And it'll test that I can do two plus three, hit enter, and it says five. It's waiting for me to, to basically type in another line of code. Or, you know, we can do multiple li lines of code too. It will, it will run it, and it will wait for us to type in, in another thing. Now, the other thing we're going to see is this text editor here. Now, this text editor doesn't run our code um, once we type it, it waits for us to type all our, our all our code. It could be hundred lines of code, and then we save it. Okay, we save it, and then we now we now tell it to read all the lines of code, and then and then uh, run it for us, or basically do what we told it to do for us. Okay, so we'll talk more about that in the in the coming videos, but this was just to give you an overview of Wing One Hundred One, the the ID we are going to be using for this Python um, course or tutorial. Um, and, and yeah, we'll talk more about it. So if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, by the way, I I'm very excited to be, to be doing this as always, as always very excited. So 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, then. Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye.